All right, well, I'm here in Ia Santorini. It's around 6 p.m., the first day of July in 2022, and I'm gonna enter a very special space right here. This is the studio and the workshop of a Greek painter named Dimitri Kolyusis, and we're gonna talk with Dimitri about his artwork in a moment. But outside, beyond these doors, this is Dimitri's book. Outside behind these doors are masses of thousands of people who are passing by every day. And this is a very special oasis. Dimitri, do you mind if we close the doors real quick? And we're gonna talk a little bit about this space. Dimitri has been in Santorini for over 40 years from before the explosion in Santorini tourism. He came here originally, he can tell you, but he has chosen to stay. He said around mid nineties, the mid nineties is when the tourism really took off in Santorini and he has chosen to stay. Dimitri, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Great. So thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be in here. Cool. So can you tell me um, just, You've been in Santorini for 42 years, you were telling me? 42 years, it was the first time I, I was here. And then uh, all the time, for all the time, I'm for 38 years. In this space? In this space. And you have chosen to stay in this space, yes. even as surrounding you has been t-shirts and olive oil and all of this consumerism and thousands and thousands of people. From the first moment, they have the festival here. Um, I saw this place, this space outside, and I said, I want to work here. So, um, I love too much this room. Nice. And I'm still here. Most of yeah. I'm still here because of this room. Yeah. I love this place, this space. Dimitri, can you tell me, so this is your workspace as well as your workshop, right? Yes. And uh, based on what you were telling me before, Jimi Hendrix is from Seattle, where my, we're based. My pet on sand. Your personal my, saint. My patron saint, yes. Nice. <laughs> I remember the artwork of yeah. his album covers where he's looking like a Hindu saint, right? It's true. Great. So your work, as you were telling me, who, who are your, who's your audience? Who are your customers with the work you're doing? Uh, well, uh, most are private collectors, but also churches are, um, and monasteries. Um, actually, I could spend all of my life in the churches, um, working there, but I don't want. It's my choice to accept only very few commissions from the churches, only special works and small ones, not to spend years there. But I have committed to do many other things and also to deeply research of that art and also mm -hmm. in other fields of, this, of painting. And you also do commissions with individual people who find I you? I do, yes. I accept, I accept few, actually, few commissions, not all, because mm -hmm. they, they want many. It's commission, but I accept few of them. I'm interested for so I can on my way to mm -hmm. uh, on my studies and to be better. Great. Can you tell me about the work that you do? How? Um, what are we seeing here, and what kind of art do you create? Yeah, I will. Um, Maybe you could come out and yeah, show. Yeah. Uh, well, this. Um, and just to be clear, this is your workshop where you do yeah. your work, and it's also where you sell your work. Yes, yes. And, um, well, let's say, basically here you can see Byzantine, um, I work mostly on Byzantine art. I study and um, I work on Byzantine art. Byzantine art um, starts, was crystallized from 5th century to 15th. It was extended also after 15th century, but let's say this is uh, basically the Byzantine period, or period of art, as almost like the Byzantine Empire. So it, it got this, um, this name as the East Roman Empire. With, uh, From the name, Roman Empire. Yeah, the yeah. East Roman Empire. And later on it was called Byzantine Empire. Okay. Anyway, the art uh, of that period is uh, what I'm interested for. Great. And can you explain, are these mostly saints that you paint? Tell me, what, who are we seeing in your images? Yeah. The most of the art of the Byzantine uh, art is, um, is around the religion. So um, there are thousands of uh, the decorations in uh, the decorations in the churches, and some uh, it was the most of the around this art. So uh, yes, there are saints and uh, angels, archangels. Uh, mm -hmm. And are the people who tend to purchase your art tend to be religious people or no? Uh, many of them they're not. 
and uh, so also as piece of art. As art, I would say, let's make a little bit uh, talk about this art because it's something very special here. Uh, trying to get uh, the holy ideas, the religion, the Byzantine art refused uh, from very early the very classic, very realistic uh, um, um, uh, expression of the, what we see, but the things beyond we see and we respect. So they find their voice, they try to reach these ideas with uh, different ways, let's say like um, cubism, surrealism, symbolism, and many other new things, the new uh, the modern artist uh, uh, started from mm -hmm. end of 1800, uh, early 19. Okay. Um, I think also, so nothing is, was new, completely new. So the world existed in the So mm -hmm. it was the most modern art in the Western world until uh, the modern art uh, arises in the Western world. Now, I see that a lot of your work is painted on old doors and old, old pieces of wood. Can you show me and tell me about that part? Sure. Uh, let's say, um, let's, let's go here. It's a very classic, uh, uh, this a door, a normal door from a house. So um, uh, I got this romantic shop. It was, I love the, I love the wood. I love wood as a material. And also, um, uh, they have history, they have, they have a warmth. And uh, so the perfect um, uh, panels for me to st stick on some uh, some of the figures like the mm -hmm. archangels. Um, and on doors it, like this, I mean, I saw just like people's yeah. initials carved. Yes, these initial. are uh, meaning uh, names, and uh, the, because the, it's very old, it's probably from 1800. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they are through the the life of them, the people write names, also messages on them. Yeah. Uh, still of graph. So I try not to uh, not to cover anything of this history, anything of this beauty, and um, trying to I like to help to pay with me. I don't. I want to cover the whole thing like uh, like the like this one, mm -hmm. the special preparation because it's so beautiful, the old wood. Yeah. So uh, I love this. Can you show me some other pieces and tell me about them? Um, with on old woods or anyway? Oh, any of them? Yeah, yeah. Let's say uh, anyway. Old woods are those ones that we are not. They are, uh, you can see them clearly. They are not uh, full of gold or they are not prepared. So you can see the wood through. Uh, but this one is a very classic Byzantine work. That means the wood is prepared with cloth, organic rabbit skin glue, special chalk, many layers. And, uh, and then gold leaf, real gold, 24 carats gold, and then you paint with egg yolk and the pigments. And, um, and the pigments are from uh, from where? Uh, the pigments are um, from all over the world, the best pigments. You can, because there was the transition since the Byzantine Empire, also even before, but the highest, the most beautiful workshops of, of that kind of work was in Constantinople, uh, through the century, through the Byzantine Empire, amazing, great. Uh, so, where do you think those pigments come from today? The ones that you use? Uh, they come. Some of them they come. Let's say from. Uh, let's say the very special blue comes from Afghanistan. The very special uh, famous lapis largely from a stone. The Arabs brought it there from uh, on seventh century, I think, seventh or eighth century. Uh, some uh, Siena, let's say, comes from Italy, or some okra. It's. Uh, uh, you can find in the ground uh, as uh, oxide of uh, iron. Some special red comes from Iran, some uh, or from India. Some special blues come from uh, other places or from uh, some special red. Another special red comes from Venice. Uh, mm, I so, understand. Yeah. Can you tell me specifically? I see one of the themes that I see everywhere is that there's a lot of gold. Can you tell me about the use of gold, what it represents, and how, where does it come from, and how do you incorporate that into your painting? Is it is it an actual gold paint or gold flake? Explain that part to me. Uh, this, is, this is gold leaf at uh, the beginning. Uh, uh, what you see gold is real gold, gold leaves, uh, gold plates, and platinum I use. And uh, why gold uh, in, this, in these paintings? Uh, anyway, it's, it also it has to do with the religion mostly, mostly uh, because it separates the, um, uh, the environment 
of the of the, uh, of the theme. You can see all the theme clear, not uh, the uh, behind. I mean the environment. That's the uh, Renaissance or the uh, uh, Western artists paint mountains behind so lakes and all this. Here is painted uh, with gold. You can see only the theme. Let's say the sand or the Madonna or Jesus just painted. And also because of this shine, it's very special. It's, it makes you uh, feel, I don't, I don't know the English word, uh, it, it, but it, I mean, it brings you to a uh, spiritual uh, world. And also, it, another very special reason is uh, that um, uh, with, the, um, uh, with, the, uh, with the faith, they put the most precious, precious material on this uh, object that people pray on. Uh, it's something very special about this. Got it. Amazing. Would you like to tell me about some of these uh, pencil drawings over here? Ah, oh, pencil drawings. <laughs> pencil drawings, uh, anyway. My pencil is my most, uh, um, is the material I, I love the most. Really? Yeah, yeah, since I was a little kid, I was, I was drawing very well. I've never drawn nice. like a kid. So, so I now admire so much and I love so much the children's paintings and so on. Because I never, I never drew like a kid. I mean, let's say, uh, in the school, uh, when you had to draw a horse, the children made two rounds, two circles and four lines, yeah. legs. I did the horse. Anyway, uh, these are studies of mine and it's very serious study. It's the base, um, uh, it's not my, you know, Everybody says that, uh, uh, the great master say that the base of mm -hmm. painting is very sketch. It's a right sketch. So, Dimitri, I want to ask you, you had told me that you don't use a mobile phone, you don't drive a car? Uh, I don't. <laughs> I, have a motor, a motor, uh, I have a motorbike, but I think I'm going to change it with a time here. Okay. How, tell me just about how you fit in here in EI in 2022 in terms of there's so much consumerism. Yeah. There's so much picture taking and Instagram and social media and people trying to uh, just say, I was here. And <laughs> there's so much commerce. And then you step into this studio and this space is so different. So I'm curious about how you feel about this oasis of your studio, your workspace, your workshop, and just sort of uh, the self-selecting process of who makes their way in here and you know, why do you choose to stay in a place that is so commercial, yeah. given that you, that's not you in your work? It's very simple. Uh, I ha from, uh, I, have, I have first to declare that I believe very much in technology. Technology is uh, the highest level of civil civilization of these times. Incredible um, um, process of the humans. Unfortunately, the civilization is not, um, is not being used uh, wisely, and also it's capitalized by very few um, corporations or anywhere that is making lots of money and uh, destroying many these beautiful things. Uh, technology, unfortunately, could, it could save the world, really, it could, and it could make our life much beautiful, much simpler, much better. Uh, but because of there are people who make profit out of this, it, it's almost the opposite. And people, and people waste a lot of time on, uh, with this and also mm -hmm. doing rubbish in this. And most of the time they spend mm -hmm. using these technologies for nothing. Uh, living, uh, I don't know, escaping from the real, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, from the real world. In any case, um, uh, um, the other question is that uh, I'm here before the tourists come. I'm here. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, your audience, when your was, customers. Uh, yeah, when I was here, when I first came here, I didn't think about so after a while or originally I knew it was uh, I knew that it would be this way uh, actually not that way exactly because I would think that it would be a little bit more wise to um, live in a, di a little different way and uh, with more human uh, feeling I mean people to come here and come more better time and uh, feed them not like uh, customers but like humans like uh, yeah. visitors like friends but yeah, I don't like it so much. So you have a sort of self-selective process of the people who end up coming in here. Uh, people who come in here maybe are they're meant to come in here, yeah. and the people who are meant to 
stay outside and not make their way in here. I mean, uh, I cannot, I cannot, um, I cannot choose, of course. But uh, yes, it's said like this. Uh, not so many people come in, mm -hmm. and most of them are interesting, interesting people. And um, from the other ones, I'm sorry. Nice. Uh, I, I and you meet? I assume you meet people from all over the world. Yeah. I really am so lucky that I met really incredible people from all over the world. I have really mm -hmm. great friends. Special minds, special the old time, the times before when you had more time. Because now these people cannot, cannot walk <laughs> and they don't choose this. Yeah. But before, let's say before um, 2000, for, uh, 2005, before 2000, it was a joy to walk by and see really nice people, nice dressed. And, but uh, after a while, it was the most people who were not interested at all to work. And now, this, you don't want to, <laughs> yeah. to cross them. Yes, I understand. Let me ask you a question. Uh, in the beginning, I noticed the Jimi Hendrix on the wall, and you said he was your personal saint, and, saint, and I see the guitars on the floor. Would you like to play one song for me? <laughs> okay. Let's do it. <laughs> Just, just a riff. Who would you like to sit in front of? <laughs> nice. So at Santorini, Dave, we are, of course, celebrating the best hotels and restaurants and things to do around the world, specifically in Greece, and very much so here in Santorini. But we're also trying to help people to have wonderfully authentic experiences and to connect with the people and the places that they're visiting and sharing these kinds of stories with artists and other people a little bit outside of the mainstream consumerism is something that we also love to do. Dimitri, how do I pronounce your last name again? Dimitris Koliosis. Dimitris Koliosis. And people who are interested in learning more, if they're interested in commissioning some of your artwork or potentially purchasing it for their collection, can I'm going to put his contact info in the description before, below this video. Dimitri, thank you so much for taking the time to share your story with us. Tataksanopume. Tataksanopume.